What's up, guys? Welcome into Dog Sports Live. I am your host, Graham Coffey. Uh, many of you may know me as Dog Out West on Twitter. Um, here today for our UGA Kentucky film review show. Just want to make sure everything is working here. It looks like it's all going well. And we are live on air. Yes, we are. Love to see it. All right. Sorry, guys. A little bit of new technology. Josh is not with me this evening due to some work conflicts. So we're going to break down some film. Just me and you guys. All right. Uh, thing I want to start with before we get into some tape is a little bit of discussion of just how good Stetson Bennett is playing. Right. So throwing this up there. Uh, you can see highest completion percentage on throws, 10 plus yards downfield, SEC quarterback since 2016. Uh, Stetson Bennett is having a historically good downfield passing season so far. Now, small sample size, obviously. Um, like UAB, that's you know one of the games that's factored in here. So there are some G5 opponents and lesser opponents in these numbers. But the flip side is that Kentucky team that they just played. Had a good defense. Uh, Auburn has a, a good secondary. Um, you know, depending on if it's him or Daniels next week against Florida, you'll see another team that that rates pretty well in a lot of the defensive power ratings, uh, that LSU game aside from last weekend. But they've been playing pretty solid defense up to this point in the season. So, um, you know, one thing to, to look at, right? So splits he's putting up right now today. I'm not saying a month from now. I'm saying right now, today, they are good enough to go win a championship behind, especially when you have that defense across from you. Um, you know, 2021 Stetson Bennett, 69.5% completion, 12.1 yards per an attempt, second in the NCAA behind just Grayson McCall in a 224.5 quarterback rating. Um, you know, Mac Jones last year, 77.4% completion, but – uh, a little bit lower at 11.2 yards in attempt, 203 quarterback rating, 2019 Burrow, um, you know, 76% completion, 10.2 yards in attempt, 202 quarterback rating. Again, none of those guys had anything close to Georgia's defense across from them. So it's, you know, I don't want to get too down the wormhole of who should be starting or who shouldn't. Uh, you know, we're going to talk more about what Todd Mockin's doing right now as we go through this tape. But I would say he's he's earned the benefit of the doubt with what he's doing and what he's gotten out of Stetson Bennett. Um, uh, one of the ways that he's getting that production out of Stetson Bennett is play action, right? So there's kind of a misnomer uh, that you have to be running the ball really, really well to have an effective play action passing game. That's not true. And in college football, uh, play action passes are just way more effective than traditional dropbacks uh, have been for a long time. The numbers bear it out. Uh, that's, you know, Josh could probably give you a, a little bit better idea of how many times more effective they are, but uh, it's it's a significant margin. So 44.6%, almost 45% of Stetson's dropbacks are coming on play action. And on those dropbacks, he's 26 for 34, 76.5% completion, 615 yards, 18 yards in attempt, six touchdowns, does have one interception. But, uh, I mean, just – it, the numbers are off the chart and when he's throwing past 20 yards so far this year uh 29 yards per an attempt on 12 attempts eight completions 66.7 percent completion four touchdowns so he's doing really well down the field the other thing that's changed is if you go back and look at 2020 stetson bennett the ball was snapped and he would laser in kind of between the hashes and it only seemed like he really trusted himself or was maybe not trusted himself, but he only looked comfortable throwing between the hashes and that worked fine for a couple of weeks. And then defense is adjusted. And, you know, you ended up having the the performance in the second half against Alabama and um, the Florida game. They started out with some throws to the boundary and the those throws went for touchdowns. Uh, so, you know, right now Mockin has him throwing more outside the hashes and outside the numbers than, he is between the numbers, and I think that's part of the reason why you're seeing this production. But credit to him, credit to the staff who has been coaching him for, <clears throat> excuse me, for that that change in kind of where he's being successful. Um, 
I mean, there's not an, any, any, any area of the field, whether it's outside left, outside right between the numbers, whether it's, you know, 10 yards to 20 yards, 20 yards plus zero to 10 yards where he doesn't have a good completion percentage and isn't spreading the ball around. So this playbook is open right now is what I'm trying to drive at. And the field is open and he's being accurate in every quadrant of the field. So uh, kudos to him. If this continues, you know, I don't see anyone beating Georgia. I also think it might be hard to put JT Daniels back into the, uh, back into the, the lineup just because I mean, he's playing at a, at, a historically good level again small sample size we'll see how this bears out over more time or we'll see if jt daniels is the starter against florida and that'll i think you know be indicative of something in its own right so keep an eye on it but <clears throat> no doubt he's done a fantastic job filling in since he is uh since he's had to start with daniels having the the core injuries and the lats and all that stuff going on So getting into some film, as we often do, uh, we're going to start with some offensive tape and uh, we'll go kind of from, from there. Um, let me just pull up my video here. All right. Awesome. So, you know, first play, you've got a bad miss from the offensive line here. Um, just kind of a, a whiff on the block. Um you know, I, I let me I, like instead of double teaming. So you know, if we go back here a little bit, um, you see here, Darnell picks up this end. You know, you got Darnell right here at tight end, and that probably should have let Salier pick up that blitzing linebacker, but. Instead, he kind of at first double teams the defensive tackle with Warren Erickson. Um, this this offensive line has kind of struggled with delayed blitzes. They engage themselves into double teams a lot instead of waiting for a linebacker or moving up to the second level and putting a helmet on a linebacker. When you look on that reverse angle, you're not entirely sure who that was on. Maybe Darnell should have left his man for Fitz and you know let let Fitzpatrick pick up pick up that in there since he is the outside guy um, because they end up kind of both double teamed on that end. But either way, Kentucky brought seven guys. Georgia has seven guys to block them and Georgia doesn't pick it up. So that's a problem, right? Like, you know, I, this, this running game is getting better by the week, but it seems like when they're running against stacked boxes, this isn't quite the Georgia teams of 17, 18 uh, and somewhat 19 where, you could put seven or eight guys in the box and they were still going to find a way to, to ground out five or six yards on the ground. Uh, this is a lot more situational running based on looks that the defense is giving. Um, the good news is that when they are seeing five man, you know, five man boxes and four man fronts and three man fronts, and you know, they're, they're not seeing a bunch of guys loaded up there close to the line of scrimmage. They are being productive in the run game and that's forcing these six and seven man boxes. And when those boxes happen, that's when you're seeing these explosive plays down the field. So they are doing enough to make the offense work the way that it needs to work. Um, so, yeah, we come off of that and not a great way to start the game. You're in second and 14 and Monken loves this play. He uses it really well. He knows Stetson is more comfortable on the move and off of play action. And he knows Kentucky come out early and, and brought seven rushers. And so, you know, move your quarterback – Get him on, get him moving. We know he's more comfortable on the run. Let him hit that big tight end for the first completion of the day. And Darnell does a good job going to work after the catch. It's a first down off of second and 14. You'll always take that. But that's also a good way to kind of stop some of these seven-man boxes that we're talking about. And some of these, these looks where the defense is coming heavy against the run is go and abuse the man coverage with the tight end matched up on a linebacker and go and pull that tight end out of the box and make that linebacker follow him. So kind of mocking here early is doing what he does, right. And sort of trying to influence the defense and also trying to look at what the defense is doing and find a way to get some productive plays out of it. Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, 
moving forward. So this is a beautiful job by the O-line right here. Uh, third and six, they give Bennett all day. Just a missed ball. Um, the route could have been probably a little cleaner for Mitchell, but that's still a miss from Stetson. That's one he's got to hit either way. But this offensive line remains absolutely phenomenal in pass blocking. And the play action that we were talking about to open the show, 45% of Bennett's dropbacks coming off play action, the reason they're able to do that, one, the offensive line is doing a phenomenal job in pass protection. Two, Stetson's feet, I think, help a little bit in that as well. But, um, you know, just kudos to the OL and what they're doing, even though that wasn't uh, a completion from Bennett. So here we've got another second and long situation and another situation where Monken gets Stetson on the move. Great job of A.D. Mitchell finding the sticks sitting down you're kind of noticing a pattern though right like you get Stetson rolling especially when he's rolling right he's comfortable and they like to work those boundaries like we were talking about at the start of the show um so Monken saw early that Kentucky was really playing off of Mitchell on the outside um and he kind of took he took advantage of it over and over right we just saw that last play uh here you know he's got a good I mean, the line of scrimmage is the 50. This guy's on the the 43, 42. So, you know, about seven yards there, and he's he's lined up two yards off the line of scrimmage. So that's nine yards for your receiver to work with. So what are you going to do? You're just going to, like, go ahead and abuse that space. Uh, Mitchell basically catches that ball where that DB was lined up. So there's not many corners out there that aren't going to start a play in a backpedal so just just easy, you know, easy picking for the Georgia offense right there. Um, he also does it with Lad. This time it's off of play action, but again, getting cushion and taking some advantage of it over here on the on the side, um, working those boundaries. This reverse angle shows just how good this throw was. He puts it right over that linebacker, and you know, really this is a a nice rope from Stetson. It's on a dart. Show some legit arm strength, good trajectory. Um, these were just throws that we didn't really see from him last year. We saw a lot of stuff down the middle, but we didn't see this outside boundary kind of passing game with these deep comeback routes. And especially from the far hash, um, that's a long throw. And, you know, his arm looks just really live right now. And it looks like he's he's very comfortable back there throwing those long passes. Um, so... This play from Kendall Milton, uh, you know, this this might have been the play of the game, right? Like, this is the, uh, the, the, the pass that ends up being a fumble. And Milton kind of fakes his way. <laughs> I mean, running in there, you see him. Like, he's, he's really uh, pretty, pretty calm and, like, starts running towards the ball. And then you see him sort of slow down when he gets close to the Kentucky defender's and then, boop, speeds up and gets on it. But super heads up by him. I mean, the game's 0-0 right there. Turnover. You're the number one team. You've got all the pressure in this game. Uh, just you, you don't want to get in a situation where you're in a dogfight or you're down early to Kentucky and everybody starts tightening up. And uh, that play put Georgia into this third and four, third and five situation. And, you know, we're going to see – Monken again, like this, this dude is just really good at what he's doing right now. He keeps the offense vanilla. And then when he needs a play, it's like, all right, let me go into my, my big play bag and pull one out. He's only used 30% of his playbook so far this year. And the stuff that he's saving for down the road, whether that's Alabama in a title game or, or a college football playoff scenario, um, that's exciting to think about. And, We've talked a lot, you know, Cook and McIntosh can be very dynamic in the uh, in the passing game, and we haven't seen them used very much. And I think that's just because Georgia hasn't had to. Why burn this stuff onto tape if you don't have to? I think that's kind of the mentality right now. It's like if we can get by running our, you know, pretty base vanilla stuff and still be teams because we got a generational defense across from us, then let's not show, you know, everything that – that we have let's not expose all the tricks in the book so one thing i want to shout out here is darnell washington uh you know he's on a, a route into the end zone 
We're going to look at this reverse angle and the block that he puts onto his guy. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, might miss the reverse angle there. But you can see him kind of coming to the, the left side of the frame here. He's blocking this whole time. He's got his guy lock, locked up for, you know, three or four seconds. So just good work by him. Um, and then – how many weeks in a row have we seen this now, right? Uh, Monken showed these guys, you know, some some runs off the left side. And then we're going to see Stetson get out, make a play with his legs, start moving. Um, just, you know, I think his, his legs have added an element to this offense. Uh, it feels like, you know, when Georgia just kind of needs something – or, you know, when these linebackers from the opposition are starting to key on the running backs a little bit too hard and aren't really, start, you know, aren't really respecting the running threat from the, the quarterback position, that that ball gets pulled and then it goes around the, the opposite end. And it's usually a nice, you know, 15, 20 yard gain. Um, so right here, this is what happens when Georgia gets this offensive line to the second level. Beautiful work here. You see Sawyer coming up. You see Schaefer. Um, just really, really nice stuff. That's what that's what everyone's excited about, right? It's inconsistent right now, but these guys, you know, when when everything clicks, it's a thing of beauty. Um, you know, just I, I think if Georgia can do this consistently, it takes this offense to a whole whole another level, but. Beautiful work here. Um, Erickson does a good job. And, you know, all of a sudden, I mean, don't get me wrong. Cook's doing a great job, too. He's making guys miss. But there's guys out in front of him, you know, creating lanes and making things easier. We've seen a lot of runs this year that have been great by the running backs where they haven't had great blocking help. And they're just – they're making three or four guys miss on a, a seven- or eight-yard carry. So, moving on. Now we're going to pull some guys around and hit off the right side again for six. This is a, a beautiful drive. I mean, little five play, 80 yard, all on the ground, touchdown drive. You'll love to see it if you're a Georgia fan, kind of classic RBU, ground and pound type stuff. But I think what, you know, what I would kind of go back to is we talked going into this game. Kentucky was giving up a lot of explosive runs off the right side of their or, or I'm sorry, teams were creating explosive runs off the right side of their offensive line against Kentucky's front It'd be the left side of the Kentucky defensive line. But, you know, Georgia picked on that and you finally, I think, saw some some bigger, longer, explosive, more explosive runs in the in the ground game than we have seen throughout this year, even against teams like, you know, UAB or Vanderbilt, like we haven't seen, it feels like a ton of 30, 40 yard runs and you saw them on this day. Um, moving forward, this is going to be one of the few times all year that we've seen Georgia look bad in pass protection. Um, Warren Erickson gets bulldozed here, um, right here, right tackle. McClendon doesn't do a great job either. It lets his guy get around the edge, but the right side of that offensive line really kind of collapses here. And, you know, Stetson makes a good smart play to throw it away, but third down, you're punting back. Uh, seven point game, not an ideal scenario, right? I thought coming out of halftime, this offense really, there was times in the first half where things looked good and all that, but there was also, you know, Times where things didn't quite feel in rhythm, but coming out of halftime, this team really looked like they were they were focused and in sync. And you saw this, and Mocking was in his bag coming out of halftime. I mean, this is a a nice ball to Darnell. If it's a little bit better thrown, he probably runs for a while. But Georgia just abused Kentucky with the tight ends in the second half. Uh, that's what we saw. Over and over and over. Um, here we've got this end around. I really like this wrinkle to McConkey. This is still that first drive of the second half. And it makes Kentucky's linebackers think, right? Uh, takes advantage of his speed. You love seeing Stetson Bennett get out there, block a little bit. 
Um, good stuff all around, but you know, quarterback run game in around to McConkey, uh, in around to Brock Bowers. We saw earlier this year, all that stuff keeps linebackers from crashing, makes them have to hesitate and it helps create running lanes. And, you know, this, this all pays dividends that maybe we don't see, uh, you know, but I promise you it's helping Georgia and it's helping these, this offensive line. It's helping these running backs find more holes and, you know, find more explosive runs. And then we've got, uh, this is a dime from Stetson to Bowers for the touchdown. Uh, two plays later, I love that Monken went right back to him. You know, there was the long, uh, kind of tight end. Uh, I don't know if it was a screen or a check down, but there was the long pass play where, uh, where, where Bowers just outruns the Kentucky defense. They got called back for a pretty ticky tack holding call on, uh, Justin Schaefer. And so, you know, Monken, I think came out of halftime and was like, I've got a matchup advantage with my tight ends and their linebackers and good on him for, you know, be having conviction around it. Cause he goes and, takes advantage of it one more time, go into his tight end. Uh, that time I think he's matched up on a safety, maybe their star guide, but still either way, Brock Bowers is a mismatch pretty much on anyone he's, he's <laughs> going to be covered by. So um, good on, good on Mike and for just going back to what's working. Um, and then, you know, Monken has kept things pretty vanilla this year, like we're talking about, but here we see another, throw to the halfback, which don't get me wrong. This isn't like a razzle dazzle play checking it over to Zamir, but um, you know, that's a, that's a 15, 18 yard play right there. And it's just something you haven't seen Georgia do is really kind of throw those swings out to the perimeter. And I think it's something that as, you know, especially as Kenny McIntosh gets healthy and back involved in this offense. Um, I think it's something you're going to see because these backs have been great absolutely great in space and enforcing this tackle so far this season. Um, next right here, Georgia, you know, one thing I would point out too is like this game is seven points at halftime. Georgia flies down the field, scores a touchdown one, three and out from that defense here. They're going to come right back down the field. Uh, they don't get a touchdown. We're going to show you why, but you know, all of a sudden it's 24, seven, they kick a field goal, 17 point lead you're out of it against this defense. And it feels that way with this Georgia offense right now where, or I guess this Georgia team in general, where it's like Kentucky played a pretty solid game uh, throughout the first half and didn't really do anything wrong to start the third quarter. But this defense is so good that it's just like, it's going to create opportunities for the offense. And, all of a sudden it's like one little three, four, five minute section of the game can happen. And you go from having a one possession game that you're right into to a three possession game that that pretty much feels over because you gotta you gotta play against the the Georgia defense with your offense. So it, it, they feel a little bit like some of the old Bama teams or just you know any kind of great college football team of of years past in that regard right now. Um yeah, but right here, this is going to be the best throw that I've ever seen Stetson Bennett make. Strike on a wheel route to John Fitzpatrick. He's the tight end in the end line there coming out of the stance. And uh, it's just it's just a really saucy throw. Um, it's right underneath the safety against cover two. That is a uh, an NFL throw. It is. And really good job by Bennett reading the coverage, sticking it in there getting it, you know, where the defender's back is turned. But um, those are just the throws that he's making right now that I don't think we saw him make last year. Um, here we've got long play downfield to uh, A.D. Mitchell, and he's just very savvy with his routes. I mean, you see him pop open here. This reverse angle shows you kind of what he does on the defensive back, but he's just subtle. He does a good job creating space. Um just continue to be very impressed with him. And then you're down here on the goal line. You're third and four. It's Georgia. What are you going to do? You're going to run a toss sweep, right? That's what, that's what we, you know, that's what Georgia's done for the last, you know, half century. Um, problem is you've got three linebackers out here and 
None of them <laughs> make a block at the snap, and Milton gets caught up there in the backfield. So that was one you want to have back if you're Georgia. I'm sure that's one that uh, they'll be talking about in the film room or have already talked about in the film room this past week. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you got three three tight ends out there. Somebody's got to block somebody. Everybody's got to block somebody, right? Because um, I think if they do get that block, uh, you probably like Kendall Milton's chances there in that situation to get to the corner. Um, Bennett to Bowers is a real thing. Uh, here we see it again down the middle. Nice throw from Stetson. Um, and then, you know, George is up 24-7, and this is the last possession they see all day. Uh 12 1250 left in the fourth quarter, but Fitzpatrick and Lad McConkey uh out here, you know, blocking their butts off, which they did to end the Auburn game the week before. Uh they, they were really great in the fourth quarter blocking. You see both of them get kind of seal blocks there that allow James Cook to to come around. Here you're gonna have a nice reverse angle. You see McConkey coming off the right edge there and working his way into the play. But uh, those are the little things that, you know, that become big things when when they spring runs. And then last touchdown of the day, last offensive play of the day for Georgia, uh, you've got Brock Bowers again. Just he's an unreal athlete and another dime by Stetson, even though he has to let the go of this one early. I mean, the athleticism and hand-eye coordination from Bowers here is unreal, but good job by Bennett letting this go, even though the blitz is kind of bearing down. Good touch on the pass, lost it over the defender, and beautiful job again. So Brock Bowers, absolute freak show. Um, you know, I – like he's – I got yelled at from people – at by people on Twitter earlier this year for saying that he's doing Kyle Pitts things. I didn't say he is Kyle Pitts, but he is doing Kyle Pitts things. Um and, you know, he's just extremely impressive. He moves very well for a guy's size. I know I showed the clip of him uh, missing the block down there on the sweep on the goal line, but he's blocked his butt off all season long. Uh, he's been a better blocker than, than truthfully I expected him to be coming in. I thought we would see him in the slot and, you know, he would be uh, pretty strictly a receiving tight end, but he is a complete tight end uh, right now today as a true freshman. And what he – might do over the next, you know, two years, assuming uh, that that Georgia only has him for three, because right now he looks like a guy you're only going to have for three years is pretty scary to think about. Um, moving on to the defense. Uh, so the defense started out in some softer zones and K Kentucky was content to throw underneath early and just take a few yards on first and second down. Um, so, you know, early in the game, they kind of use that formula to get out to midfield and then, they finally decided to run up the middle on Georgia on a first and 10 play. And when you do that, oftentimes against Georgia, you're going to end up in a second and long. And that's what happens here. Jordan Davis, this is an unfair play. Um, he just, you know, he comes off one side of the center at the snap, sees, you know, forces the, the run back into the other direction and just, moves back to the other side of the center, um, just moving people around. It's kind of crazy. And then, yeah, now you got Kentucky in second and 14. Davis goes out. Jalen Carter comes in. And I, I still think he's the most explosive of these Georgia defensive linemen. Uh, just unreal get off. You're going to see him jump right in here, make a really beautiful tackle on the SEC's leading rusher, Chris Rodriguez. You know, Georgia held them to uh, – to held Rodriguez to seven yards on seven carries. The reverse angle of this is really fun as well. This is just absolutely stupid good. Boom, boom. Um, just as smooth as as smooth of a big man as as I have ever seen. Um, you know, at least at Georgia, and maybe one of the smoothest at at this level that that we've seen in a really really long time. So. This is going to be third down play. Um, and the secondary does a good job here forcing the check down, right, and kind of giving you guys this, this bigger all-22 angle so you can see everything that's going on. But uh, Chris Rodriguez is going to get a little, uh, you know, a little kind of check down 
swing ball out here by the numbers. And he's a guy that is really good at falling forward. And it's just very fun to watch how this, how this Georgia defense rallies to the ball here uh, and where all these red shirts kind of come from. Uh, you're going to see, you know, Dean, Jackson, Walker, Walker, Wyatt, all those guys rally into the ball. It's what you want to see on tape if you're a defensive coordinator. You also like what's happening if you're if you're a secondary coach. You see Walker has good coverage on the tight end here. Um, you know, Kendrick has this outside receiver in lockdown. Bernie's got your your slot guy in lockdown. So impressive work by the Georgia defense, you know, forcing checkdowns and rallying to the football. That's what you want to see. And it's hard to beat anybody doing that, but it's going to be really hard to beat Georgia doing that. Um, third and one, meet Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt. I'm sorry, that was Devontae Wyatt. But, yeah, third and one play. Um, Kentucky, you know, they've been able to physically move people on the line of scrimmage and, and you know, convert those short yardage situations in every game they've played so far this year. And all of a sudden George is able to put them in situations where they don't. So Devonte Wyatt remains really impressive. Um, oh, I don't know why that's in here, but this was a very good run by Kendall Milton. That was a play that I was happened to on the offensive segment. Now we found it. Georgia defense or Georgia offensive line did a really beautiful job pulling swing around to the left there. Sorry about that. Back to the defense. Um, here's the third and one play. No, I'm sorry. This is first and 10. Um, apologies. Oh yeah. So, you know, one thing that I would say, there's a ton about this second quarter touchdown drive that Kentucky went on. That, like that is just not really repl replicable. Um, they did a great job. They executed very well, but they were forced to empty out all the tricks in their playbook in order to go on that march. Like Georgia never really misplays anything. Um, you've got these throwback screens. This, you know, maybe some questionable moments that could have been holding calls. That not necessarily, but um, – you know, just everything kind of had to go right for them. You still have Jalen Carter get back there and force what looks to be a, you know, a sack fumble at the time. It gets overturned. They get a pass interference penalty that moves them another 15 yards downfield. And they are able to hit some good plays. But, I mean, like, their offensive coordinator had to go deep, deep, deep into the bag of tricks to, to make that drive happen. And – I just, you know, it's like, I don't know that you need to worry about Kentucky going on that drive if you're a Georgia fan. I'm sure people are going to try that throwback screen. Uh, I can guarantee you Georgia's going to see that again. Uh, Kentucky's athletic offensive linemen, though, a little bit different than the system a lot of teams run. Like, not everybody have linemen that are going to be comfortable getting out and, and doing that. Um, but, yeah, I mean – it's just I don't I don't think you can be mad at it. You got to tip your hat to Kentucky, uh, and you also got to realize like, all right, now that's happened. Uh, you know that's a lonely feeling as an offensive coordinator to to go on a drive like that, which they had to have at that time to really kind of stay in the game. But also know, all right, I've just burned you know all these things that I've been saving all season for when I was going to need them, and now what do I do next? And that's kind of the conundrum that this Georgia defense is going to put pretty much every offensive coordinator that they're going to see into um, right here. So this touchdown play should give you an idea of how much respect they had for Georgia's front by this point in the game. Um, you know, they, this is a, a pretty sweet little play with some nice action to it to, to get this, this tight end open out here for a touchdown, but, you don't burn plays like this on a tape as an offensive coordinator. If you know, like a, a quarterback sneak or a, a halfback dive up the middle is, is going to get done and get you your six points. And, you know, clearly they felt like that was the time to use it. And I think that's because of what Devonte Wyatt, Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter had already done to that point in the game. Um, here you're going to, you know, this 
kind of the other long drive that Kentucky uh, went on is, is later in the game. But um, you're going to see, you know, they try this this kind of throwback sort of action, try to get everybody rolling in one direction again. Kendrick and Smith right there do a good job. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Kentucky probably has the best offensive line that Georgia's going to see, uh, and I would include Alabama in that, and you know, at, at least until the CFP, depending on who that, that may or may not be. But um, that offensive line still gave up four sacks to this front with an athletic quarterback. It's just this this front is impossible. Um, here we've got a third down play, uh, I think third quarter, and there's a wheel route to Rodriguez that I'm not sure if it's the primary read here, but it's at least where, where Levis wants to go. And Seen sees it coming right at the snap, does a great job taking it away and, you know, forces Levis upfield into the arms of his defenders and – you got a, a change of possession. So great job by him. He's, you know, a big physical fast safety that does a lot of things really well. His, his cover skills have been improving every, you know, kind of every year since he's been at Georgia, but he's extremely cerebral and he sees the field very well and he understands the game very well. And he, you know, reads, reads offenses very well and something that maybe we don't talk about enough, but credit to him for, for all of the work that he does back there. Um, so Ringo is going to be down here on the bottom. Um, he's been very, very good in man coverage this year, but he's still, I think, learning how to play zone and kind of learning how to, you know, play zone with his teammates. Um, he plays this with, with too much cushion and it turns into an easy first down for Kentucky. Uh, Georgia did play Kentucky a little bit softer once they went up 17, but sorry to, to scroll back here. You know, if you look at where um, where Darion Kendrick lines up on this play versus where where Ringo is, you're going to see Kendrick's you know up here at the top. He's going to kind of come downhill at the snap and press this guy a little bit. And you know, those guys may have had different calls, but uh, but Ringo is just real soft on this one. I mean, there's six seven yards there. That's easy pitch and catch for Levis. Um, Ringo's a great athlete. He has better closing speed than, you know, probably almost any other corner out there. But still, you can't give guys seven yards um, and, you know, just kind of create easy first downs like that. Uh, here we're going to see Quay Walker do Quay Walker things. Uh, I think he fills running lanes as well as any linebacker in college football. Um you see him do this over and over and over. You saw it against Auburn. You've seen it all season. But that physicality defending the run against Kentucky, I think, was really important to kind of how this game played out. And they, you know, Kentucky never really was able to create much of anything on the ground. And a lot of that is because of his ability to kind of hide and then scrape into the hole and and meet those running backs head on. And when he gets there, he always makes the tackle. So um Credit to him. This is uh, going to be, yeah, this was 100% holding on this block on Darian Kendrick up here, uh, number 11. You're going to see him get wrapped around like that. There was a good number of plays like this in this game. Um, I rarely talk about officiating on this show. Uh, everyone gets shit calls from time to time. It's kind of part of the deal, but like the SEC officiating has gotten so bad that it's getting to the level of incompetency. And the problem with that is that it's getting so bad that uh, it makes people question what's going on or question if biases are happening, happening. I don't think that, you know, that's the case necessarily. I just think that these officials are really, really bad, but you saw some ticky tack kind of fouls on, you know, holdings and, uh, blocks in the back on Georgia in these types of situations in the open field that were very, very marginal at best. And then you, you know, there were some times where Kentucky straight took down Georgia's defensive linemen and tackled them, which is not legal. Um, and you never saw a holding flag on Kentucky all day. So I, I'm sure that's something Georgia will send into the league, but, and, you know, I, I get it. Kentucky's the underdog and, 
all that. But just because Georgia's defense is really, really, really good uh, doesn't mean you can hold them, doesn't make it legal. So I think that's something that's worth monitoring going forward because I think there's going to be games that Georgia plays where if the officials throw a holding flag, especially early on in the game, um, you're going to see Georgia just get unreal amounts of pressure if the the message kind of gets delivered of like, hey, we're going to police this. And, and you know, Kentucky's offensive linemen, again, like I said earlier, like I think it's the best one Georgia's seen so far, and I think it probably will be the best they see all year. But, you know, there's still – like it, it's not their fault. Like if, if they're not going to call holding, then – then you hold. I mean, like the old adage is holding happens on every play. So credit to them for kind of taking advantage of the officials not calling it very closely in terms of, you know, not, not calling tight holding calls. But um, yeah, it's just, it's something to watch for your Georgia fan. Cause I think it, it very much could change kind of how some games play out with this front seven in particular and how good they are. Um here coming up yeah we're gonna have the field gold block um this play truthfully like i will remember this play 30 years from now if you ask me about the 2021 georgia kentucky game uh i might not remember the score i might not remember brock bowers doing what he did but i will remember <laughs> jordan davis and Devonte wyatt turning kenneth horsey number 68 kentucky starting guard into a human blocking sled um you've probably seen this play by now if you're watching this show, but watch what happens to his back leg here and watch just like it, the amount of force. Like it, it looks like a, you know, a small, a small car wreck, basically. Um, like he just gets driven back. I mean, what is that? Four yards or so. Yeah, I mean it's 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 three and a half yards or so. Um just I mean <laughs> that's kind of what's interesting about how this whole game played out, right? Is Georgia's defensive line, Kentucky did as good a job neutralizing them as anyone, and credit to them. They found creative ways with some of these throwbacks and stuff like that to, you know, some stuff that kind of functioned as long running plays where they didn't have to engage those guys and could kind of, you know, go around them. Like I thought that Liam Cohen, the Kentucky offensive coordinator, schemed this game as well as, you know, as well as you could really. But even if you do everything right, it's like, well, eventually you got to line up for a field goal and these guys are going to wreck you. You know what I mean? That, that steals the possession um, block field goal, you know, it takes three points off the board. Like this group this Wyatt Davis Carter trio uh and the whole front seven's outstanding and fantastic but those three guys just wreck games and even if you do everything right there still is going to be a point where they probably wreck the game um so just absolutely uh impressive to watch fun to watch it's I mean if you're a Georgia fan enjoy what you're seeing right now. Cause this is uh, something that you probably won't see again. Um, this, this kind of level of, of talent and explosiveness and uh, impact coming from really the defensive tackle position uh, is just rare. It's rare to get one guy like that. It's, it's, you know, almost impossible to have three. Um, here we've got kind of, this is the last drive Kentucky went on. Thought it was very interesting that basically, you know, they're they're down by 23 points. It's still a, you know, it's still a three possession game with two point conversions. Um, and they basically decided, like, we know we can't be explosive and make this a, a competitive game and go try to, you know, score quick and kick an onside kick or force a punt or whatever. So they just kind of conceded the game to gain three and a half yards of play all the way down the field. And you know, 22 play March, they go down there. Stoops takes timeouts at the end and, and they get in and they cover the spread much to, you know, my chagrin and I'm sure a lot of other people's, but uh, I think that's like a very good indicator of how impossible this defense is right now. It's just that you've got to go out and basically say, we give up, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to try to 
really kind of from a game state game situation standpoint, like Kentucky wasn't trying to win the game at that point. The goal was just to, to put 14 points on Georgia. Um, and, you know, they did it credit to them. They, you know, achieved that goal, but that's, I mean, that's just kind of wild to think about like Georgia's defense is sort of breaking the, the game state rules of, of football in a sense right now. Um, at least they did in this situation. So uh, last couple of plays here, you've got uh, Ringo on Wandale Robinson here. I thought, you know, there were some moments in, in coverage where, uh, you know, he might want to have back or just kind of Kentucky was able to, to do some things against him. But uh, he did a great job tackling Robinson all day and just really technically sound. Um, you know, here he comes in and just kind of takes his legs out, but uh, also got, I think, maybe his first career sack in this game off of corner blitz on this last drive. So just very impressive athlete, um, but I just continue to be really impressed by how well this secondary uh, tackles. I mean, everybody tackles really well, but the secondary tackles very, very well, and you just don't see that all the time in college football these days. Um, fourth and four on Kentucky's last drive. Uh, this is just kind of one more officiating thing. So play clock is going to be at zero and there's still going to be a man in motion at the snap. Uh, this should be two different flags. Crew misses both of them. It's on a fourth down. Um, if you're a Georgia fan, you may be having, you know, 2018 uh, CFP title PTSD from this play. Did it make a difference in the game? No, it didn't at all. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, plays like this happen, you know, uh, not all the time, but they definitely happen. But it's just like this officiating thing, just watching a full day of SEC football on Saturday from Tennessee Ole Miss to Georgia, Kentucky, to Alabama, Mississippi State, to uh, LSU, Florida. It's just this the officiating in the conference is horrible right now. and. Um, they got to figure it out because it's, you know, if it just means more and you've got a product on the field, that's it's quite literally a billion dollar industry. Uh, you got to protect it and you got to make people, you know, believe that you care as much as they're, you know, telling you that I'm sorry, is you got to make people believe that like, if it just means more then then make it mean more. And if it, if it means more than, you got to get it right. So uh, that's all I got for you guys tonight. Um, would remind you, uh, please follow me on Twitter at dog out West D a W G uh, go follow Josh at dog underscore stats. Um, you know, if you're a sports gambler, please go check out odds jam. Our partners, uh, they do a great job, have some really great tools uh, for all sports betters out there. You don't have to be a professional sports better or anything like that. Um, they, they do a fantastic job and, and you can find some good plus EV bets out there. And uh, if there's a line that you want to hit or an alternate line that you want to hit, they will help you find it. Um, code dog sports live for 30% off your first two months with those guys. Um, also, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, you can get my, uh, gambling picks. I am 52, 28 and one on the season so far. We are bringing Vegas to its knees, knock on wood every week. Uh, I'm convinced it's going to be the week that we fall back to earth, but hasn't happened yet. So, um, you know, you guys rub your lucky rabbit's feet for me or whatever it is you guys do for luck, but hopefully we'll keep rolling in a good direction. Um, if you want an FTMF hat, uh, there are some red ones, uh, still left in stock and Josh has those at dogstats.com. Uh, Get them now for Jacksonville. You will be the most stylish person at your tailgate. Um, yeah. And please subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, dog sports live. And if you enjoy this show in the uh, podcast or audio format please check us out on spotify and apple um thank you guys for joining us really appreciate all the engagement that we've been getting from you guys so far this season been a blast you know arguing with some of you in the comments uh even fans from other schools and 
lots of folks stopping by. It's, it's been a ton of fun, you know, really enjoying it. So, uh, get over to YouTube and, and join the conversation over there. Cause, uh, there's a lot of, you know, fun kind of banter and back and forth going on. So thank you guys. Have a great night. Go Braves. And, uh, we'll see, you. we'll see you probably late week with just a little, you know, drop our, drop our picks and maybe have a little, uh, little talk show, uh, not, not a film show. Cause there's no game to preview this week, but, uh, we'll have some content for you guys before, uh, the weekend. So enjoy it. Thanks guys.